This is an interesting paper that caught my eye, Robust Decision Making Via Free Energy Minimization. And it caught my eye very specifically because I was actually engaged with a prominent researcher on this particular topic yesterday. Oh, it's very serendipitous. <laughs> the researcher took the stance that um, models, AI models, don't learn, and like neural networks, LM models don't learn via free energy minimization, and so like that they are not part of like free energy, uh, like the free energy conservation principles, uh, and that they don't learn directly via free energy conservation. Uh, and then we got kind of into it because I was like, you know, like that would make AI overall like uh, an entity that is uh, very unique from anything else that exists, either like computers, biological, et cetera. They all follow these principles. Uh, and then my argument was that even if like AI is not um, directly trained via free energy minimization, that the principles are still in effect. And like, it's just that we haven't figured out how to apply the direct principles to uh, AI and machine learning that we, uh, like our principles are kind of just skipping around it. Um, and then this paper comes along and it's very interesting uh, because they introduced this method called a DR free, uh, which is a free energy model that installs the core property of uh, like the free energy minimization principles um, into AI reinforcement learning very specifically. And then in general, their method is uh, very straightforward um, in like, uh, how it works and how they implement it. But uh, so you have with probability theory, it's probably I made a, a doc for for this for you guys very specifically. So within probability theory, you have two like uh, there's a more types of probability algorithms, but the main two types for AI specifically are KB and Monte Carlo and then KB being Kolbeck Liebler variational. Uh, and then so with the KV algorithms and, and, and KV probability, it approximates interference via optimization. So fitting a simple distribution to approximate a complex target distribution, whereas Monte Carlo approximates inference via sampling, uh, estimates expectations by drawing samples from the target or the proxy distribution. Like, the best way that I can break this down is so if... Um, if you were to utilize uh, Monte Carlo sampling for this particular algorithm, it would generate a simulated environment and then you would simulate the environment a bunch of times, like say a thousand times, right? And that would be the output. This uh, method, this KV method that they introduced, and especially within the DR free method, it's very unique because it relies on distance measurements, which I pointed out to a lot. It's it's like um, this method that they have um, introduced. It's a lot like a K for the neighbors, right? Um, it's so if you you're familiar with the K for the neighbors concept that I've introduced for uh, supervised learning, I, I would say that this is most equivalent to K for the neighbors, but for reinforcement learning. So again, proving that these concepts exist, right? Uh, and then so what uh, KV does very simplistically, or their their KV implementation does very simplistically in the DR free implementation is it takes uh, the environment. So we'll say a trained environment, which would be A, um, and they'll say it's training it on a chip scheme. Um, and then let's say that uh, the computer then it runs into it and it runs and then it runs into a situation that's never seen before uh, during this chess game, right? And then so it will run, uh, it will run that calculation through essentially like the 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 DR free method, which essentially uh, creates different environmental scenarios. And then so it will say, okay, this is the um, environment that I was trained in, and it becomes A. And then whatever the orthogonally worse environment is from that. Like the, the furthest that the model can calculate would be like the <laughs> furthest from the like the, the natural training environment. We'll say that becomes um, Z. The model will train in, in, in do predictions from A to Z, uh, and then it will pick, okay, which one of between A to Z uh, is most equivalent to this environment that I'm faced with now, and then it goes with that. So it's um, predicting based off of like the actual environment, right? So it's uh, KV transforms an inference problem into an optimization problem over distributions. So like, again, it's like, you know, A through Z, whereas Monte Carlo transforms it into a sampling problem, of taking that one environment, I'm in this environment and then sampling it over and over again. Hopefully you can see the differences to like how one actually 
um, relates to uh, or is um, far different than the other, right? Uh, kind of like, so in, in these free energy frameworks that we're talking about, KV appears naturally in variational free energy formulations. And then so you're just minimizing the the KL divergence between a variational model and a true generative model, whereas Monte Carlo appears in approximate valuation of expectations. So if you can't compute the output analytically, you can sample from the output and then average over the cost. So in short, KV is the engine of inference, while MC is the engine of expectation estimation. In DR free, the policy derivation uses <laughs> derivation uses a KV like formulation, minimizing KL divergence between agent trajectories and the generative model while computing costs of ambiguity. You might still use Monte Carlo sampling inside of DR free if your ambiguity costs requires a numerical expectation estimation over complex state distributions. I'm going back to the paper here. Uh, so the paper is, again, very focused on reinforcement learning. So they do all of this via reinforcement learning simulations and simulators. Uh, and then they introduce their DR free method, which you can see uh, like all throughout here. Uh, and then this is kind of just the, the framework that they, they lay out for the method. Um, and then so create uh, creating optimal policies via like, uh, so it's, you know, gradient descent, as you can see here. Um, and then like uh, optimal policies, like, incorporating gradient descent with free learning principles and, and free energy principles, which is very uh, interesting. Right? Because it's, uh, as I stated yesterday, like there's like a lot of people, there's a lot of arguments around this, like is gradient descent unique from this? And, and as I debated with that person yesterday, they uh, have that same argument, right? And this is, I mean, there's all of their really independent results behind it, but they're not proving it out, but through the conclusion. Okay, that you can link uh, gradient descent specifically to free energy principles, which is actually like the, again, it's a very big deal. Um, and this, uh, this, the, the bottom line is, is that like within DR free, it utilizes Bayesian belief updating, and then so Bayesian mechanics within this comes into play, which is majorly important because it's thought that like Bayesian, like this Bayesian belief update system is how like logic actually works and occurs, right? And then so it's said that like because models aren't explicitly designed to do this process, that they don't, and then that they're not connected, and then there's not a method for them to be able to do this. But this DR free method is is, I mean, it's pretty clearly um proving that wrong, right? Uh, and then so here's their experiments and, and, and all of that. What I like to do is uh, prove it out. Like, um, so here's the code for uh, DR free. <laughs> and then so this notebook implements a complete prototype of the DR free method, a robust decision making system inspired by the free energy principle and is designed to handle environmental ambiguity. You can look through uh, all of the features here that it offers. Very first thing that I do is like flat out reverse engineer the like a uh, full math and like how that would look as a protocol model within like the notebook here. So very specifically, I, I, this is all just protocol, right? So it's 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 all just the math breakdown, so you can fully understand exactly how this model is is working, how it iterates. And then so very specifically, they take two models, right? They take a, so you have a trained environment model and then the, and then a generative model. And then, so the trained environment model is trained on, on, on the environment and that becomes what produces and what is able to produce, uh, like the, uh, for the furthest, like the KV furthest environment calculation, right? Like K for this neighbor's calculation for the enforcement level. That's a, the generative model is the one that is performing like the nearest neighbor's calculations. And then you put those together and that's kind of how it works overall, right? Uh, and then your loss function is based off of um, your state cost and your action cost. And then you define the ambiguity set. So what exactly defines ambiguity within the environment? That's just a part of that K calculation. Uh, and then you, you design the model to maximize a free energy over ambiguity set, just, just like you would, you know, like uh, maximizing free energy uh, and free, uh, energy conservation for anything. Uh, and then, like, I, I mean, to me, like the uh, just pointed out, like, if you look at like um, LLM or AI model behavior, to me, oftentimes they uh, exhibit like free energy principles, right, where they would give a, a quote unquote lazy response. <laughs> and then it's like, um, is that programmed in or is the model actually doing it? And to me, it's, there's nothing programmed into it to, to make it do that. 
Um, so it's uh, free energy principles, right? It makes perfect sense to me um, as to why those situations occur. And just pointing that out, right? To me, it's it's this has been observable for a long time. It's just that this gives an actual framework. Uh, and so you have the idea of free optimal policy, uh, which optimizes. This is the actual optimizer, right? It's <laughs> optimizing the policy based off of the the um, like the simulations, uh, and then you have your sequential policy update and optimization. So again, like this is the the full part of the optimizer, right? Four and five are the optimizer, uh, and then if you want to like uh, optionally, <laughs> you can utilize that to like uh, sway the reconstructions. So, so given your observations and given your environmental observations, you can make it update the actual weights of the model. So that's how their logic is set up here. Um, so this is just like. Uh, the mathematical reconstruction uh, like from the DR free framework. And then let's actually do it in principle, right? Let's actually do this. <laughs> let's uh, uh, create a model, show it, what it would actually look like, et cetera, right? So we define the states, we define the trained environment, we create the generative model, uh, and then we need to train it. <laughs> uh, and then so we'll go through, and that's what we're doing here. It's like a, so uh, forward pass and backward pass, so back propagation. So, like, it, it, this is utilizing back propagation within reinforcement running there, putting that out. And then you have uh, there, uh, this is how it works out, right? So, you have uh, the uh, agent will go through, it will. It, Sit, like provide the KV calculation for the environment. Um, and then, so in this instance, it has like three calculations, um, and then it chooses the one with the highest probability, which very, and it's like, you know, very significantly higher than the other two. Um, and then that's the one that it pops into, uh, and then chooses like kind of the best action from there. Um, and then, uh, I like to, so this is the, like, uh, here's the, the prototype, you know, like the full math behind the, the implementation, math, like, you know, math into code. Um, and then here's like the, the full, like, uh, show implementation and like utilizing like actual models, how it would look like with the actual implementation. And then what I like to do with these things is take it a step further, right? If I were to actually build out this algorithm, how would I build it out? What's missing to me? Uh, and then as I'm going through this, like all of these exercises and building this out, the one thing that sticks out to me is that there should be memory um, within this framework. There's not a memory unit in this framework, um, which is interesting to me. Uh, and then so very simplistically, I just add that. So I add environments and memory. Uh, the core idea is to equip the agent with a memory component that captures information from past interactions with the environment. This memory will refine the agent's model of the environment dynamics and adjust its decision-making process dynamically. Uh, essentially, here's all you know, the math and, and, and the updates that I do for that. Uh, and then my benefits, I, it's learning capability. The agent refined this model based on real-time experiences overcoming the static nature of the original framework, reduced uncertainty as memory accumulates, the ambiguity set shrinks, allowing the agent to rely more on its learned model rather than worst-case assumptions and flexibility. The receding horizon approach balances computational costs and adaptability, making it practical for dynamic environments. So my overall hope and goal within this addition, very straightforward, is that it gives the model more capabilities. And then by giving the model more capabilities, it actually reduces compute costs because within the, um, the framework, right, it has to generate KV policies for every time it runs into ambiguity, which with, whereas with the memory, um, it could have a memory associated with like ambiguity, so it wouldn't have to run through that full KV table every single time it runs into it. And then so like over a lot of iterations that would reduce computational cost. And then so here's the full code for um, the additional simulation. Uh, it's just with the additional memory outputs and, and the additional memory layers. Uh, and then so uh, hopefully if you're interested in DR free uh, and you want memory attached to it, it's already built out here for you. So you can already utilize it uh, and customize it. And if you want to know like the inner workings, how it works and teach yourself from that level, here you go. So every single part of it uh, that you would like. Overall, this is a cool framework to me, like this uh, DR free. Super glad that they introduced it. Super glad I read this paper, uh, especially because of, you know, that debate overall yesterday. I, 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 to me, it's 
all comes down to environmental learning, right? Like, and we see that more and more. Like, these are <laughs> environments for the model overall, right? Like, no, no matter what we're creating, we're creating digital environments, we're creating a carpool environment, an environment of cats, <laughs> like whatever it is, right? It's it's an environment that the model is interacting with, and the more sensors that the model has to interact with its environment, the better the performance is. If you just feeding it with like supervised learning and that's your entire data set like and that's all that the model learns that's the model's environment like that's still it's not a data set right it's an environment and the model is what it becomes and then so the more robust that you can make these environments and then the more um, ability to learn and directly from the environment and especially the thing free energy minimization directly into the algorithms it does nothing but help the model overall um and then to me, hopefully it becomes clear. There isn't like nothing that is uh, going on within these models that are outside of the laws or the rules of general physics, right? It's just the plain and simple bottom line. The models utilize free energy minimization. They they care about energy conservation because literally every system in existence is not a energy conservation. So AI would have to be a very unique exception to a rule and they're not. <laughs> and so uh, we're finding that out more and more, right? It's just that uh, AI is not an exception to any rule of physics. We are, we have to change our understanding of physics because some of it was wrong. Um, and then we're, now, like, that's 100% proven that some of our, our current understanding of physics was wrong. So AI yeah, wouldn't be working the way that it does. So how do you handle that information and move forward from there? That's the big question that people are facing right now. And then you have some people that are just making breakthroughs through the ceiling and through the roof, breaking it all apart. And then some people that are struggling within that. Um, and then that's just kind of the reality of the framework, right? I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do any of this. Uh, it's just the way that it is uh, overall. So just pointing that out. Uh, and then so if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.